channel, the Evans Mastermind. So, uh, well, I'm Mark, so what we're going to get into today? I'm going to tell you what this. We're going to get into your ladies playing football. We're going to get into where do the Hawks go from here, the Georgia Clemson matchup, the Bucks and the Phoenix Suns, and the Braves without Acuna, and the King, what? Kingfish. <laughs> yeah, the Kingfish. So, first of all, while I'm going to get into, I'm going to get into what, what, was, what was it like in your days playing football? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I want to thank you for having me on your show. I watch it all the time, and I just enjoy it so much, and so I really appreciate you having me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but back in my day, didn't nobody care about it being hot, didn't nobody care about it raining, didn't nobody care about it being cold. Um, I started playing tackle when I was in the seventh grade. Before that, I played flag football, but at sixth, seventh grade, I played tackle. And when you come out, you nobody knows you. So you've got to really just go out there and make a name for yourself. So uh, believe it or not, in the sixth grade, I started as an offensive guard. Mm -hmm. Sixth grade. So the sixth and seventh grade, I played guard. And then the seventh grade, I played guard and a linebacker. And believe it, I was 90 pounds, soaking wet in sixth and seventh grade. Got to the eighth grade, playing tackle. You're starting over again because the coaches don't know you. And I think I had gotten up to about 120 pounds by that time in the eighth grade. And so uh, I, they put me in the backfield and as a linebacker because I would hit. I love to hit. Me too. I would zero in on them, and it's almost like sneaking up on them. You kind of, yeah, like boom, you lay the wood on them. And that's the other thing. Back in our days, we were, we were taught to hit with the shoulder pad or your face up, and you would cut the back of the thighs, and you would jack them up like this, yeah. and drill them in the ground. That's, I'm sorry, that's, that sounds wild, but that's how we would talk, and that's how I tackled. Nowadays, they try to run and bump you down, knock you down, but, yes, but that's the difference, and it didn't matter how hot it got, we was out there. When I got into high school, I played for games of high, big red elephants, and we had tradition. When we showed up, people were scared. That's just... That's just what it was. Your Uncle Ben played for him. He was a lineman, and they were just, they were pancaking people. And so when I came along, I, they moved me to running back. I couldn't understand it. I don't know why, but that's where they moved me, to running back. I was 145 pounds as running back. But I was quick. I was fast. I knew I had to out-quick them big boys because they'd be trying to put the wood on you. So I just out-quick them. Um, but I enjoyed it. I had a great time playing. And every, around November is when you got into the playoffs. Yeah. The difference between now and then is back then, we always had, it never was a question, are we getting in the playoffs? The question was, who are you going to play? And the question wasn't, are we going to practice around Thanksgiving? Because we always knew we played the Friday after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So nobody took vacation. The difference today Kids don't know if they're going to get in the playoffs, so they make vacation trips. They run on vacation, and the coach is pulling their hair out. and So that, that's the difference. Um, they try to limit the practice. Back then, coaches practiced too. We couldn't practice, and we went home. But uh, I enjoyed it. Went to college. I, just, I quit it because uh, I hurt both ankles, and, and I just kind of gave up football. But I enjoyed it. I love it to death. All right, I got you. Because like I said, I'm 5'9". I'm 5'9". I want 80. I used to, when I was Bigger playing football I was. last year. When I was playing football last year. I was like five eight, two hundred and thirty pounds. I was that big, and I was like, ooh, I could not be a running back. I could not be a right receiver or do anything with the ball unless I'm just a defensive lineman trying right. to intercept it or get it, return it for a touchdown. I don't think I could do all that because I was so big and I'm still big now. Yeah. I ain't that big like I used to be, but I'm big. I'm big enough. <laughs> I don't like you. So I know next topic when we get into the Hawks and where do they go from here? Right. You know, Trey Ice Trey, he did really good. Yeah, yeah. scared, shocked us in the playoffs. What's yeah. your thoughts on that? Well, um, I think a lot of people were surprised by the Hawks even getting in the playoffs and going as far as they did. But I, but I believe they forgot what they did the first two years, mm -hmm. the first couple of years when Trey, Trey came to the Hawks. They could score. Yeah, that was not an issue scoring. 125 points, 130 points. They'd be losing, but they were scoring a lot of points. The problem, they didn't play no defense. Yeah. They went and got Capella, and then when Nate McMillan took over, 
they started playing defense with Capella playing defense, and so the whole team bought into playing defense. And so, so the scoring don't go away. Mm-hmm. It just you start playing defense, and so that 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 made their run for the playoffs. Now, where do they go from here? They they lost it. Obvious that when Trey got hurt and he was limited in what he could yeah. do, uh, that hurt the Hawks. Uh, but what it does, it, a couple of things. One is Collins got to decide whether he's going to post up or shoot jumpers. Yeah, or dunk on you. Exactly. Well, he can keep dunking. But he got to decide <laughs> what's his game. There's nothing wrong with doing both, but sometimes he's on the floor and it's like he's indecisive whether he want to post up or shoot that jumper from the outside. The other thing is Capella either got to learn to get him a little short jump shot, a little jumper, yeah that will make the big post come out to where he is, which opens up more driving lanes for the Hawks, or he's got, or they got to go get somebody, a big man, yeah. with, with a little more height that can do those things. Yeah, um, Capella is big enough. He's 6'10", 240. Some say I need to be like 6'10", 280. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I just think Capella just got to – they don't respect his offense. Yeah. And he don't have offense unless Trey give it to him. Mm-hmm. And so when Trey was hurt that last game, it hurt Capella yeah. and his offense. Yeah, because you know, and you know, with Trey Young and Luka Doncic back then when they were, you know, selected in the twenty eighteen in a mm-hmm. NBA draft, you know, they were traded for each other. So they were, we thought that the Mavs were gonna get Trey Young and Luka was gonna come to Atlanta and said they traded up, or you had the they traded up, so they got Luka Doncic, you got Trey Young. And the thing is with Trey Young, the first two years before we made this run in the playoffs, you know, Trey Young was a dude that was scoring forty and fifty points because they were like talking to him like he they were remind, he was reminding me of Devin Booker, where you're going to you're probably the best scorer in that team, right. but you're playing with a bad team, so it's right. almost like are you a bust in the NBA? But tr- unfortunately, Trey Young wasn't, and he showed us that he could obviously do something in the playoffs. Yeah. I think the biggest thing there, and they mentioned it in the commentating, was that Nate McMillan got him because remember now the other, the last, I think it was last year or so he made a comment that the Hawks need to get him some help. Well, they drafted help. Yeah. The problem was he wasn't trusting the help. I mean, it's a, to be a point guard and give the ball to somebody, you expect them to do something with it, and mm-hmm. he he wasn't trusting. Now he's trusting. And you see the you see the fruit of his labor. Yeah, I think yeah, getting getting Byron Lloyd Pierce to get him a new coach like Nate McMillan. I think that was a great move for yes. us, and that's why we made this great run to the playoffs. So hopefully next year we can celebrate being in the NBA Finals because we That'd know be great. we ain't won it since 1958. And you know, and we, yeah, and we're we only trail the Kings with the most seasons without a title because the Kings are like 69 years without a title. We're second to them at what 62, 62 years without a title. Mm-hmm. But like I said, we haven't won a championship since nineteen fifty eight, and that was when we were, you know, when we were called right. St. Louis Hawks. Right. Either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, next up, what? A, so how how did you feel about Julio trip going to the Titans? Whew. Can I tell you something? If you if you really go back and look at it and listen to it. Julio, or there was no mention of Julio being traded before the draft. All of a sudden, after the draft, yeah. Julio says, trade me. Mm-hmm. And I, I keep telling um, people that I work with, I tell them all the time, that it was a couple of years ago, Julio and um, who Matt. was the receiver? Oh, before? Matt. Oh, before Julio? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, tra- he helped Julio. Yeah, Muhammad Sanu. Sanu and... And what else? Who else? Was um, it was. It was. Well, Austin Hooper, I know, was there. No, not Hooper. He's a tight end, but it's the receiver that we had that was. He was the stud. Calvin Ridley. Not Ridley. Um, oh, I can't think of his name. Tony Gomes. It just, it just went bl- I went blank. Um, Maybe Rodney White or something? something like Roddy that. White. Roddy White, was that him? I think it was Roddy White. Roddy White. Mm-hmm. Or if not Tony Gonzalez. Was... No, it wasn't Tony Gonzalez. It was Roddy White. Roddy White, Sanu, Julio. It was like third down and something. Matt Ryan threw the ball like you needed a ladder to get to it. I mean, Julio's bad, yeah. but he ain't that bad. He needed a really tall ladder, and Roddy he needed White. right behind him was Roddy White. And, mm-hmm. and after the game, 
I mean, after that play, Matt Ryan, he threw it behind them and hired something, and, and they were going off the field. And a lot of people missed it, but the three of them were going off the field together, and they were looking back at Matt Ryan like, oh, God, really? I mean, it's like something that just keeps going over, over, happening over and over. And also, if you look at it, put the pieces together, when Matt Ryan got his money, yeah. that big contract, that's when Julio said, pay me. Yeah. Julio hadn't said nothing about being paid until they gave Matt Ryan all that money. Yeah. And then Julio says, well, who? Pay me too. Yeah, 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 what about so, me? I yeah. Matt Ryan. Exactly. 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 That was the year Matt Ryan won the MVP. That's season. right. That's right. I didn't know that. Yeah, but they didn't give Julio nothing. So who was about to pay me? Yeah. So they paid him. So then you come up on this draft, you had about six top quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the Falcons didn't pick now one of them. Yeah, they they get they picked that tight end from Florida Kyle Pitts, which she was great. Yes. But I feel like we we need more of a quarterback exactly. than a receiver, so we could have kept Julio. Exactly. Thank you. And Calvin but after and that's it. Thank but you. after it's the draft the and the Falcons didn't draft a quarterback. Oh, and you right. call it coincidental. But after they didn't draft a quarterback, all of a sudden, Julio says, I got to go. Oh, That's why I got this on. <laughs> That's why I got this on. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But uh, I, I wish Julio much success. But, yeah. but I yeah. think yeah. that was a lot. That, that had a lot to do with it. Then all of a sudden you hear about the salary cap. Yeah. And yeah. Matt right. Ryan, the money was tied up with Matt Ryan and Julio. They already said we ain't getting rid of Matt, even though they, they put it out there publicly then that anybody's up. But who more money is vested in Matt Ryan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's the quarterback. Exactly. He's supposed to so, lead the team. They could take him second. And they second. could not. They could not. Go ahead and do it now. They couldn't sign their their draftees because their salary was tore up. Yep. Now I'm gonna leave that alone. I ain't gonna bother that. But at the so. <laughs> That was one of the things they used as an excuse to mm -hmm. trade Julio. But at the end of the day, I think Julio wanted to leave. And he did what was best for him. Because he had said, first thing I think his first words when he when they asked him about being with the Falcons, he said, oh, I'm out of here. I don't want to. That's what he said. I'm out of here. I don't want to go. I, don't, I, I mean, I don't want to stay here with y'all. I just want to go ahead and leave. Mm -hmm. And I think ever since when the Falcons had drafted oh. Kyle Pitts, I think, yeah, like you said, that had to do a little something with him. Because, yeah. you know, the first three picks, you had the San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. You had whoever else. I ain't going to get into the other two teams, but I know you had one of them. And I know that those first three teams that, like, they Chicago. had got a quarterback. Was it Chicago? No, Chicago's Chicago. Pat Pitt, Justin Fields, okay. like 11 or Yeah, 13. that's right, 11. I think as I look at it now, wait, who was it? Was it who was Florida? the suckiest thing? Oh, those Jaguars and right. the New York Jaguars Jets. had the first, and the Jets had the I second, and the Jets had the second. And that's they right. Zach Wilson in the Not first Lawrence? one, they got right. Trevor Lawrence. Right. It was and Trevor then Zach and, yeah. and then you have Trey Lance, the dude from North Dakota State. Right. But I feel like okay, well, don't be sleeping on these dudes just because they go on, just because they might be not in the FBS level or like. The power five level, these quarterbacks still mm -hmm. show you something like, look right. at Josh Allen. He went from Wyoming right. to the exactly. best Bills quarterback. Exactly. And he is balling. The boy's balling. Yes, he is. And you give him a receiver to help him ball. Like Stephon Diggs. Exactly. And he is I don't know what the Falcons doing. You know, let me say something about this. So I know it wasn't on our list to talk about. I just want to kind of throw it out Go there. Um, you got more players uh, going to smaller schools and yeah. playing. And I think, and we're talking about good players. We're talking about yeah. five-star recruits yeah. going, four-star recruits. These, the, the, and I think part of that has to do with um, they, they just feel like they're going to get more shine yeah. if they go there. But then also I believe they believe, they, they're starting to believe that no matter where they go, if you're good, the mm -hmm. NFL is going to find you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's so, your power five. And that'll help you. Yeah. So you don't have to necessarily go to a power five. Sure. Because mm -hmm. look at the two um, – High school basketball players that went to Howard, Howard University. They went to Howard University, mm -hmm. and they were both. One was, I think, both of them were like five star recruits. They were like the two of the top recruit, recruited recruited uh, basketball players. I think it was the year before, just before COVID. And then COVID hit, mm -hmm. and so we don't 
know what's gonna happen there, but we'll see this year. Hopefully, yeah, because Gonzaga probably would have won the whole thing in basketball. <laughs> basketball. They, you know, they probably would have had them or Baylor, some kind of top team. But yeah, but either way, yeah, the it was dumb. The Falcons, I felt like betrayed Julio. Yeah, and yeah. it was just it was a bad move. Yeah. Period. I agree. I know next up you wanted to get into the Georgia Clemson matchup, mm. so I already got Clemson over, over mm-hmm. Georgia. Yeah, and I, I believe um, Uncle Ben was hollering Georgia, go dogs. Yeah, go dogs. Um, let me say this: Clemson, they they lost Trevor Lawrence, right? Mm-hmm. He left. But have you seen the quarterback they got? DJ Longo Lele from California. That boy got a rocket for an arm. And they, if the defense didn't have so many people missing yeah. in that game, uh, Clemson would would have beat Notre Dame. Yeah, they would have beat because they scored the points. Yeah, it wasn't like he was out there yeah. doing nothing. No, the boy was playing, mm-hmm. and so they try to act like, oh, it's his first time playing it, and in mm-hmm. a hostile environment yeah. is the best. And he I was would. he was balling. Yeah, the boy was balling. So I said that to say this: Clemson not missing a beat. They, they still gonna have a, a top notch defense. Yeah, they're they have top notch mm-hmm. offense. They gonna, and they get coached. Yeah. Georgia, they get top notch players. But the problem with Georgia, and I love them to death, is that when them big games roll around, coaching is their Achilles heel. Yep. Mm-hmm. And because they had Alabama for a whole half, come out in the second half, even though they didn't have the best quarterback in the world, mm-hmm. but they came out in the second half and boy, they just stunk up the place and lost. And it seemed like that's what happens. It's like coaching chokes. Yeah. And when you have equal teams playing mm-hmm. each other, the coaching is what makes the difference. Yeah. And I just believe Clemson going to beat Georgia mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, Clemson's coaching mm-hmm. is going to outcoach Georgia's coaching. Yeah. Yeah. And so, then, yes, Clemson. Ooh, boo. Yeah. And then you have to look at this, too. You got to look at this, too. When DJ you on the late, like you said, when he went there in his first time against Boston College, which was at home, well, of course it was going to be a little different because Trevor Lawrence won there. So, of course, right. Clemson might have been down or they weren't going to look too good. The man still passed for 300 some yards, three yeah. touchdowns, and no interceptions, I believe. Yeah. Then, like we said in the next game, that dude passes for 439 passing yards, That's right. two touchdowns, and one rushing touchdown. And here's the thing with North Sudan and, and Clemson in that matchup. You know, Clemson had the lead. They were leading, I think, by a touchdown at one time, like 30 seconds to go. But then, of course, North Sudan got the ball back, went up the field, scored. Right. Then it went into the overtime. Then it went into another right. overtime. And then, of course, that happened. But as I look at Notre Dame, Notre Dame used to be a good football program. They used to be the stuff when they had Lou right. Holtz and Holtz right. before that. I agree. But now, it's like with Brian Kelly, it's like they can't beat the elite, exactly. which is like Alabama and Clemson. <laughs> And all these new elite teams that are starting to come right. up, what, mostly Alabama did, mm-hmm. been the lead of them all. But, you know, it's just that, okay, I felt like folks were like, well, yeah, Clemson and Alabama, yeah, they might have lost a lot of talent. But it seems like every time they do, it seems like they still seem to be good. they got more talent sitting yeah. on the bench. So it's like you're, wait, you're just waiting for it to happen. And you're just like, well, when is it going to happen? Well, of course, it's going to happen when the game starts. And I just feel like Georgia, they just don't. They just don't have the elite, or they don't have really a quarterback that can just get them there. Because you right. know, like, okay, Deshaun Watson, once he left, who else did him for him? Well, I think Kelly Bryant had fit him for him. He had an okay year, but not, he wasn't that really that good. That Dabo Swinney thought he was. Okay, then after that, they get Trevor Lawrence. They've they still been doing good. Clemson's been mm-hmm. the program since 2015, That's ever right. since they went to the national championship That's and right. lost to Alabama, 25 That's right. That's right. But either way, like I said, I got Clemson over Georgia. I got Georgia. Clemson over Georgia, and, uh, too. Yeah. I want Georgia, yeah. but I think Clemson going to win. Yeah, and a lot of folks are saying, well, Georgia, they, well, they got JT Daniels and this and all that. Mm-hmm. But I just don't feel like they, I just don't feel like that can match up with just mm-hmm. an elite Clemson team. And a lot of folks are like, well, Clemson should probably take a step back maybe in the CFP this year. And, you know, they're discussing about, well, should the CFP expand the teams from 4 to 12? But I'm just like, Either way, I think it's going to be Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, or Oklahoma. It's going to be those yeah. mainly those four teams, even though Oklahoma hasn't yet won yeah. the CFP. But either way, I just don't, I don't, I just don't think Georgia can do it really at all. Coaching, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's 
so good. Good coaching and coaching and coaching. And I think that – and Brent Venables, he's a good defensive coordinator for the Clemson right. Tigers. And Dabo Swinney, he's a legendary coach too. He's mm-hmm. not legendary as Nick Saban and Paul Bear Bryant, but he's right. getting he's close getting to it. Oh, he's getting there. Yeah. So I know next you want to get into the Bucks Phoenix. Whew. Bucks Phoenix, I tell you, I'm – This is crazy. It is crazy. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, I was on a, a chat line, and me and folks chatting. I ain't going to say who. But when Devin Booker got his what, fifth foul and he had to go out the game, he was torching mm-hmm. the Bucks. Yes, that big point, two, three, he four. was torching them. And they didn't have an asset. He had everybody waving at him, trying to get him. He still was torching them. Jump shot, layup. In the paint, jump shot, Booker was like, how do you want it? I'm going yeah. to serve you. Yeah, this and he I'm was small. killing them. Cool. But, they, yeah, but he got that fifth foul, he went to the bench, and then all of a sudden, CP3, it just, oh, man, I love him. I want him to get that ring, but boy, he looked like he was throwing the game. Then the rest looked like they joined in, yeah. and they weren't calling foul. People mm-hmm. were getting knocked around. Knocked around. I'm like, okay, I see you not in the game, but... Come on, and then let's get to the root of the matter. Devin Booker comes down, he fouls Chris somebody. Mitchell. It's supposed to be in his sixth. Devin Booker walks to the sideline, kicks the chair because he's already mad that they didn't call for some fouls. He yeah. felt like they should have, and they were like, "No, you didn't foul out. Yeah, no, come back in." I'm like, "Yeah, you did. Yeah, you fouled you know, him." I, I really then want to the win. later, Drew Holiday goes running to the rack. He grabs him. They don't call foul. Giannis cleans it up. They score. He, you know, in other words, he ended up with eight foul. <laughs> I, you know, and the reality, you know, and I, I laugh because I, I look, I listen to um, the talking, the talking heads, as they say. Yeah. Um, Big Perk says that Middleton is Batman. Yeah. And Giannis is Robin. They don't really understand. He he says yes. Giannis is the most athletic, the most gifted, best player on the team, all of that. But what he's saying is, and they it's like they forget that when he say that, and the only thing they hear is Batman Robin. But he says when it comes down to the game on the line, mm-hmm. possession by possession, Middleton is the man, and that's Batman. Robin does all the dirty work. Robin does all the grunt work. But when it's time to actually close the deal, yeah. that's what Middleton does. Ask the Hawks. That's why they at home. Yeah. If Middleton had a, had a went sat down somewhere, Hawks would have beat them. Yeah. Uh, the 76ers, well, 76ers didn't have a closer. Mm-hmm. So the Hawks closed them. <laughs> yeah. So here the Bucks, you know, they closed. So hitting the two games they won, who closed the deal? Middleton. Yeah. And that's all. That's all Big Perk is trying to say, and I understand it because yeah, if you're in the Batman, you get it. Robin does all, he does a whole, whole lot of stuff, yeah. grunt stuff. But at the end of the day, Batman come and close the deal. Yeah. And it's good that you brought that up because you know when Chris Middleton, he's a two time NBA All Star, not that this is probably a good comparison, but it kind of reminds me of Chris Middleton, reminds me of Bradley Bill mm-hmm. because you know they're both, well, they're both, you heard about them. They're both like two to three times. Well, Chris Middleton is a two-time NBA All-Star. Bradley Beal is a three-time NBA All-Star. But the thing is, they both can score. But the thing is, it's just like you don't really hear about them as much maybe as you're going to hear maybe about the other person on that team, like right. Giannis Antetokounmpo or with Bradley Beal. You might hear more about Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook. since that's he went right. to the Wizards than maybe mm-hmm. Bradley Beal is. So that's what kind of reminds me of, and I think the Hawks, you know, it's good that you brought the Hawks up. I think the Hawks can get Bradley Beal out, be a good little combo maybe somehow. Yeah. Well, I, I I hear you, but you know what? I, I like the fact that Hunter was hurt. Yeah. And if we'd have had Hunter, if he, had, if he wasn't hurt, and if is a big word to be two letters, but he is a great defender, and he can give you ten points. That's Hunter. That's what we were missing. A defender on the edge with against Drew Holiday and Middleton. And I believe Hunter would have been more than a match for them. But at the same time, he still can't get you 10 points. And, and I think we still got what we needed, just that 
in the paint where we got where we got crucified. Yeah, because you know Hunter when he played for Virginia, the Virginia mm-hmm. Cavaliers, he was a pretty good he was a pretty good guy playing with him. Like I think the first year he was a well his whatever year he was a six you know he had right. a six man of the year award. And then the next year I think when they played Texas Tech in the national championship, they had DeAndre Hunter was like lining it up scoring twenty eight points and stuff. So <laughs> You, to me, he reminds me maybe of a Cameron Johnson. Yes. Uh, for the Phoenix Suns, because you know they're both stars coming out right. of college. But then you don't really hear about them as much. But I feel like they both help out and playing those roles. You know, for the right. basketball team right. that they have, that sure. they're with. Yeah. And then don't forget Cam Reddish. Oh yeah. Who who was hurt up until February, and he just got cleared to play, and he started playing. And he came in. He would DN up and lighten it up, but by the time that third, the fourth quarter rolled around, the Hawks were looking desperate, and he was, you know, he wasn't, <clears throat> he was playing more or less from behind than playing in front, but he was lighting it up. So I, I do, I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I like what the Hawks, the makeup of the Hawks. The only thing is, I, 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 you know, since we're back there again, I think Camilla Capella, like a, like a Capella. Either he's gonna find him a little jump shot, or either we get somebody a little bigger, a little taller yeah. that, can, that has a jump shot and can turn their back, exactly and turn their back to the basket and still score. Because Compel is a great rim but He's one of the ones like DeAndre. Eaton. They're both big centers. Right. They can give you that twenty point, fifteen rebound kind of game, yeah. which that's what most centers do anyway, right. except for Shaquille O'Neal. Because Shaquille O'Neal, I think, or he was more Shaq of a point guard and a center, center. So Shaq was just a yeah, he was a little mixed. He was mixed up in a lot of things that helped. That really helped him in his yeah. size, but either way, that's a whole nother story. Yes, it, is. it is. It is. So I know you want to talk about the Braves without Acuna. Ooh, I am not going to lie to you. When Acuna went down hurt, I wanted to go cry. <laughs> Acuna. But um, because he did so much in that big off position, um, I, I heard the Braves just went and signed him another outfielder that kind of helped in that area. Overall, the, the Braves are still a good team. They're only four four games back of the number one team. So they're still there. they still got enough weapons to get what they need to do. But the Achilles heels for the Braves last year and this year continues to be the bullpen. If they can get just a little stronger pitching coming out, out of that bullpen, they, they would be a lot better. And we can survive uh, Acuna going down. But... Um, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be games where we look and we say, man, if Acuna was in there, whew, we would have got that one. But still, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, just, we just need a little stronger performance at that bullpen. Because from what I heard, the Braves, they, they've, been pretty, they've been doing pretty good. But imagine, let's say this, even though this is probably, I'm just saying, but like, what if we have Fernando Tatis Jr. <laughs> him as whatever he does? Right. I don't really keep up with baseball that much. Right. But... We had him. I think we would probably be able, we would probably we would do something for yeah. him. Maybe what we're doing, even though he probably plays a different position. Right. Either way, and I know the Braves have won three World Series, and I think they haven't won one since like 1995 when Hank Aaron right. was playing with him and all that stuff. So yeah. 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 Last, I want to get into the Kingfish Express or the Kingfish. That's what my uncle Ben wanted me to tell you about that. That he uh, wanted to help block for you in high school when you were playing because he said you were so good and all that stuff. <laughs> I was uh, I was fast. I had to be fast. Like I said, I only weighed 140 pounds. And I, I had to be fast. I was uh, hurt. I got hurt uh, about a week before the season started, my senior year. And so I was hobbled the whole season. Um, and there was a few games where I was felt pretty good, but basically the doctors were like, look, if you keep playing, it's going to hurt. You're going to be hurt. Uh, and, and you're just not going to be able to cut like you used to and that kind of stuff. So um, I sucked it up. I played. I started a few games, but I, I was just hurt. But I, I was fast. I'm not going to lie. I was fast. I ain't saying I was the fastest thing out there, but I was fast. And uh, we we did we punished some folks. And so we enjoyed it. It was uh, was the fastest thing in the backfield. I know that much, but anyway. <laughs> but we had a good time. It was it was fun. But yeah, he 
you would have been blocking for me. That would have been great. If I had somebody that big blocking for me. Yeah, that would definitely <laughs> help take the weight off you. Know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm going to say this. Uh, back when, when your Uncle Ben played football, he was like one of the biggest linemen that Kingsville had. And back in those days, in the 70s, 225, 230, that was big. Nowadays, that's, it's not. that's a little peep squeak, though. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah they're, they're 6 4 two thirty or something, 2 four. Yeah, he ran like a he ran like runaway a locomotive. <laughs> yeah, I don't bet it's like yeah. that and all that. Exactly. So, and the linemen are like 300. Run a 5-2 yeah. and a 5 <laughs> like, Yeah, like Makai Becton. <laughs> Makai Becton is 6-7. He played for losers and I mm-hmm. played for the Jets, but he is 6-7, 364 pounds, and he runs a 5.01, I think, in the 40-yard yard <laughs> drive combine. And I'm like, how, and how gonna, are you that big? And you're going to get in front of that. No. No, no, no. From that, I'll just be like, I'll just go ahead and sit down. So I'll be like, let me go out, put this guy in there, put the guy here. I don't want to. I don't take me out, right coach. There. Take me out. Yeah, or pretend I'm hurt. Pretend I had a torn Achilles or somewhere. He hurt me. That's funny. No, I'd, I'd have to suck it up. I'd suck it up. You try the best you can. Or you run away from him. Try to tackle. Try to. Don't even try to like get the quarterback. Just run anywhere and make him run. I hear you. Yeah, oh, and all that. Yeah. But you know, I'm gonna say this about the Falcons. I'm gonna let it go. I this year, I, I just don't have any expectations. Yeah, I just I have just no, gotta I, I, see. I just gotta see what happens. That's all I know to say. I yeah. love them. They still, my, I still love them, the Falcons. But I just they, 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 yeah. a friend of mine say all the time. They'll let you down. Yeah. <laughs> it, I wouldn't yeah. be shocked if they go 0-17. I wouldn't be shocked if they get the first draft overall pick. Ooh, I ain't going to say that bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the good thing the Saints ain't. That's good. Good thing at least they didn't got some more Super Bowl. The and Saints. All that, but that's, who do you who do you think as far as the quarterback? Who's as gonna far win as that? I think Jameis Winston is probably gonna win the quarterback position, and as long as they put Taysom Hill mostly in his role, even though it's probably not gonna be the same when Drew Brees is winning. But I mean, I don't really have no expectations for them either. I mean, I have them maybe. Huh. I mean, I have them maybe like let's say if I if they do you go think to a get playoff the game, maybe get the Bucks now. I'm sorry, it's the Bucks division now. I'm so sorry, y'all. But this is the Bucks. It's, they got Tom Brady. I mean, Drew Brees is gone, so it's yeah, it's over. It's the Bucks division all around. I hate to say that, Me too. but it's the, it's their division. Well, I well, that's where we'll see. Cause I think I don't like the Saints, but I just believe that if Jameis Winston. Is the starter. And they can't throw I, I think they're going to. He won't if he's the starter. Mm-hmm. I think the Saints are going to put a foot on them, them Buccaneers. Yeah, I hope so. Be a little close, if not. Yeah. Yeah, if if not a foot, win. at least be close. I think they'll get him. I think they can get him at least once. Yeah. They play twice. I think they'll get him once. Yeah, I hope we'll Tom Brady can hurry up and tire and get hurt. Yeah, yeah hurt his leg or something. He, he already did that last year, and you saw what that happened. Mm-hmm. He got the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Just hit him. Somebody knock him out. Somebody take the helmet off and just knock him out. Oh, love. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing him in the Super Bowl all the, almost all the time. I have seen him in the 11 or 12. And it's been 11, 12 straight Super Bowls. The only way to change that is to beat him. <laughs> but, no, but here's the thing. He it, just, it, it just baffles me because... It's been 19, 20 years, and nobody can't still find out a formula of how to beat this man, except for some of the teams that have. Well, now with now that he's with the Buccaneers, you're definitely going to have to figure it out even more because he's not with the Saints Patriots team. Right. So, well, let me exactly. say this. The, the, the Bucks had a team. Yeah, mm-hmm. They just needed a quarterback yeah, to James not put good. the defense in right. a bad, bad light. Yeah. And if you really look at it, the defense carried them yeah. into the playoffs, yeah. and because they were like one throw away, a couple of yards away from losing yeah. to the Packers, the Packers really should have got them. Yeah, me too. But they got they got by them. Cut the def- the defense stepped up, 
And then in the Super Bowl, the defense. Now, sure, they had some help. Um, his Mayhem linemen, all of them out hurt, and they brought folk like me to come in and block. So he, <laughs> <laughs> so he was running for his life the whole game. Uh, but but the defense just and and that put them on their heels. Not to say that Brady didn't play good and the other yeah, folk, but great. but still the the defense carried them into it. And normally scoring is not an not an issue for the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. But it was in the mm-hmm. Super Bowl because, like I said, mm-hmm. he had people like me blocking. Oh, yeah, because yeah, mm-hmm. because the thing is, you know, like you said before, the Tampa Bay had, had a great defense because they were like fourth and first, and all those categories. Even though they were seven and nine, and that was, you exactly. know, that was the year Jameis Winston was playing with them, yes. and he had through thirty touchdowns and thirty interceptions, and folks call him Fank. His real name is Fank, where his nickname is like Famous Jameis. <laughs> but either way, yeah, and they were pretty good because when you have like. When you have Nadana Gansu, you, Vita Vea, uh, Shaquille Barrett, Levante David, Jason Ooh. Pierre, Paul, uh, v- did I say Vita Vea? And yes. you have Carlton Davis. Carlton Davis, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the linebacker. And right. all of them and Jamal Dean that I keep on naming and probably and all that. I mean, who can really stop that? Nobody. That's thing. Cool. Especially if you don't have any offensive linemen because they all didn't have COVID exactly. in the Super Bowl. Of course, yeah. You ain't gonna be able to stop that, but yeah, you waste the Buccaneers division. I hope to not see them in the Super Bowl. Me. That's all I got to say. I hope to not see them in the Super Bowl, <laughs> and I hope Tom Brady gets knocked out. Here comes the boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's it for today's show. All right. Good night, y'all. Thanks for watching. Thank y'all. Marty, who you want to shout out to? I want to shout out to Sandra, my ride or die partner here at the Empty Nest. <laughs> and the rest of the Hawks. <laughs>